Hello, my name is Paul, and I want to take you through the new features in Photoshop CC. In fact, I want to go beyond that, and I want to show you some production tips that are really going to help you out. In fact, starting with this new dialog, we can jump in because we have new presets for mobile app design. Even as we go into web, I can make a, a retina display layout for MacBook Pro 15-inch, just like that. Click OK. And typically what you do when you create a layout is you'd probably drag out some guides at a certain position, roughly and you know make a column layout potentially well I don't necessarily need to do that which is why I'm undoing that because under view I can create new guide layouts okay from here you can see right away I have eight columns with the 20 pixel gutter in fact we can add additional margins like I'm doing now even add additional rows and if you're designing sort of based on a shape like I'm drawing out now you can even make guides from a shape Okay, so there it is, change that color. In fact, what I want to do now is I want to add to this, and I want to show you that we have smarter smart guides, if you will. Check this out. I'm going to hold down the Option key and Shift key just to duplicate this object, and look, I get guides for it. It tells me that it's 88 pixels uh, away from his neighbor, if you will. Just aligning objects becomes really easy as I drop that down. And at any point, I can hold down the command key and I can see how far away it is from the edges. And that's what I've done to create this layout. And I want to show you something actually really cool. This is a cool pro tip is you actually now have the ability to over scroll. Well, now I can position this anywhere I want and that's in preferences. Okay, so I'm coming into this design. I want to locate uh, these layers. In fact, how I could do that is use the layer panel or check this out. I'm going to hold down the command key or control key if you're on PC and I can automatically auto select. So I don't have to go through my layers panel. I can just click. Oh, there it is. Thank you very much. Move this any way I want. Maybe I want to bring it in so it just kind of follows that curve and I can do that. Probably my favorite feature. It's so great. In fact, let's keep in mind you can place embedded or place linked files, but check this out. I have a logo in Illustrator and I'm always using this logo. And quite frankly, I always want it at my fingertips. Well, let me introduce you to Creative Cloud Libraries. You can see I have my library. I can ha add new libraries if I want to. But these are all the assets that I use quite often. Uh, I can have assets and include them in here from Adobe Brush, for instance, from Adobe Sketch, from Line, from the mobile apps, and sync, and they will be available to me in my Creative Cloud Libraries. In fact, how do you do that even for this logo? In fact, all I need to do right down here, add graphic, click, you can see it's added now, and we can call this logo. There it is. Done and done. Now that that's in my Creative Cloud library, I can actually go back into Photoshop, in Photoshop on a different machine as long as I'm using my Adobe ID, and that's going to be available in my Creative Cloud library. You can see it right down here. Notice how it's refreshing now. There it is, my logo, always at my fingertips, always ready for me to add whatever I want as I place it right up there, for instance. I love that feature. In fact, let's go beyond that because I can add a number of things. I can add brushes, I can add layer styles, colors, some other things. In fact, what I use a lot are text styles. So I can take this text Yosemite, for instance, and I can filter by the typekit font because I love Lust. There you go. Lust display is the font I'm going to use. But basically, I'm customizing this font because this happens to be the branding font, if you will, that we're using for, for this campaign. I can change the color if I want to. Uh, but from there, I can take that font and I can add it right over here. Add that text style. There it is. And this is always going to be the title for this campaign, just like that. And I can add text underneath it and do the same thing with this text if I want to. Changing the font, changing the size, customizing this any way I want, and then adding it as well. And remember, this is always at my fingertips. So say, for instance, if I jump over here to this new document, this happens to be a website for that same campaign. So I can take out that logo, place it in place, just like that. And then even for this font, and again, I'm just going to use the command key, which allows me to auto select it. And then I can click on title, just like that, because I want this to be nice, big, and gorgeous like that. And even for that text underneath, 
for that subtitle. I can select it there. All right, so there's my design. That's looking good. In fact, anytime I want to change the color, all I need to do is apply it as a color overlay if I want to, and that's looking pretty darn gorgeous at this point. So for this design, what do I need to do next? Well, I actually need to output all of these images, which is quite a task and can get very complex. Well, I want to actually introduce you to the ability to extract assets from Photoshop. So say for instance, I want to extract this Slovenia image right here. I want to extract it out, extract assets. I don't need to go to save for web. There it is. In fact, it's ready to go. I just need to change it to JPEG and I can adjust the quality if I want to as well. But let's go beyond that because I have a lot of images. Well, it's just a matter of selecting that layer and adding it. So that's what I'm doing for all of these layers. And also what was not available previously is the ability to export out an SVG file for this logo, for instance. It will export out that as SVG. All right, well, let's go beyond that because not only am I going to output 15 images, I want them at different sizes. Look at right over here. I want to extract them at different sizes, maybe a quarter of the size, half the size, maybe twice as big, three times as big. In fact, I can see all the settings right in here and customize that to my liking. Now this is set up to output over a hundred different files for all of these different resolutions, if you will. And all I need to do is click OK and click Extract. And I can extract it to this folder. So I'm just going to call this Images. That's where it's going to put it. Let's extract them to that folder. It's doing it right now. Over a hundred files. It's extracted them all, including this SVG. I know it has a very long file name because it's based on that layer name, but you can see all the other files in here and in those folders. So when I jump out to this HTML, you can see all those gorgeous images and I can scale it down and those are the different versions for different browser sizes. You can see everything looks great. Now there's a lot of additional features, Windows Touch support, 3D printing support, being able to bring in a 3D model that has animation, posing that, printing it out, uh, Mercury Graphics Engine performance boosts as well, new 3D printing profiles. But honestly, as a Creative Cloud member, all you have to do is hit update and you can check out those features for yourself. So I encourage you to do so. Thanks so much.